Welcome back for part two of the Oregon Trail Read Aloud series. Today we're going to read the second part of A Picture Book of Lewis and Clark. Last week we focused on reading about Lewis and Clark and this week we're going to focus on reading about the expedition. A Picture Book of Lewis and Clark by David A. Adler published by Holiday House. Last week, we read about Lewis and Clark being entrusted to take this journey, which began on May 14th, 1804. We read about Meriwether Lewis. We read about Clark. And today, we're going to start right where we left off last week. In mid-October 1803, Lewis and Clark met on the north bank of the Ohio River in Clarksville, Indiana Territory to prepare for their journey. They assembled men. Among them were Clark's slave, York, rivermen, and soldiers. They also took along Lewis's Newfoundland dog, Seaman. They spent the winter of 1803 to 1804 near St. Louis, Missouri, in a camp by the Mississippi River. The Corps got underway on May 14, 1804, under a gentle breeze. Clark wrote in his journal, They sailed across the Mississippi River and up the Missouri. Their journey across the American continent and back would take two years, four months, and ten days. The Corps sailed up the Missouri until late October 1804. Then, in present-day North Dakota, they cut down trees and built Fort Mandan. They spent the bitter cold winter of 1804 to 1805 there among the friendly Mandan tribe. During the winter, Toussaint Charbonneau joined the Corps as an interpreter. His American Indian wife, Sacagawea, and their baby joined, too. Sacagawea became an important member of the expedition. When American Indians along the way saw her, they pointed, Clark wrote, she confirmed those people of our friendly intentions, for they knew no woman ever accompanies a war party, especially not a woman with her baby. By early spring, the frozen Missouri River began to melt. Lewis and Clark sent the large keelboat back to St. Louis with some of their men and with reports, along with boxes of animal skins, plants, stuffed birds, and snakes. They set off again on April 7th, 1805. They met many American Indian tribes and their chiefs. Lewis and Clark spoke with them and distributed gifts and peace tokens. Lewis and Clark and their team saw the unspoiled beauty of the American frontier. Lewis wrote of a most beautiful and extensive plain where immense herds of buffalo are feeding. Clark wrote of the many flowers they saw. Nature appears to have exerted herself to beautify the scenery. There were dangers too. The men wrote of snake bites and troublesome mosquitoes and a large gnat, which does not sting, but attacks in the eye and swarms and compels us to brush them off or have our eyes filled with them. In May, 1805, six of the men encountered a grizzly bear. This monster ran at them with open mouth, Lewis wrote. The men fired their rifles, but that didn't stop the grizzly. Two men threw their guns down and jumped into the river. The bear plunged into the river only a few feet behind the second man. At last, Lewis wrote, one of those who still remained on shore shot him, the bear, through the head and finally killed him. The explorers suffered from the weather too. In the first winter, Lewis recorded the temperature at 45 degrees below zero. In 1805, Clark wrote of a storm that did not seize. And there was triumph. In August, they reached the Continental Divide. On one side of the divide, the rivers flowed east to the Atlantic Ocean. On the other side, they flowed west to the Pacific. Oh, the joy, Clark wrote in November 1805. They were close to the west coast of the continent. By mid-November 1805, the Corps reached the Pacific Ocean. Shortly after that, members of the Corps voted on where to build their winter camp. Among those who voted were Clark's slave York and Sacagawea, long before blacks and women voted in the United States elections. They built their camp a few miles from the ocean near present-day Astoria, Oregon, and called it Fort Clatsop after the local tribe. The Corps had crossed the American continent with the coming of spring. It was time to go home. On March 23, 1806, they began their journey east. In early July, Lewis and three men separated from the others to explore a different route up the Marius River. While they camped, some of the Blackfoot tribes sold their rifles and there was a fight. Two of the tribe were killed. Peace between them and white men was shattered. Later, there was a shooting. One of the men was hunting meat and shot what he thought was an elk or a bear, but it was Lewis. He shot him in his rear and for weeks after that, Lewis had difficulty walking. 
In mid-August, Lewis and his men rejoined Clark and the rest of the Corps. On September 23, 1806, they reached St. Louis. It is with pleasure, Lewis wrote to Jefferson, I announce to you the safe arrival of myself and party. The president replied, I received, my dear sir, with unspeakable joy, your letter of September 23rd. After thousands of miles of travel by water, horseback, and on foot, they had returned. They hadn't found woolly mammoths or a Northwest Passage, but they did come back with plant, rock, and animal specimens new to American scientists. They returned, too, with reports on many of the nation's American Indian neighbors. In December, President Jefferson wrote to Congress that the Corps of Discovery had all the success which could have been expected. Lewis and Clark and their brave companions have by this arduous service deserved well of their country. Congress awarded the men of the expedition double pay. After their return, Lewis and Clark separated. Lewis was made governor of the Louisiana Territory. Clark was made agent general for Indian Affairs for Louisiana and governor of the Missouri Territory. Meriwether Lewis was upset by financial troubles and on October 11, 1809, was found dead of gunshot wounds. He was either killed by a robber or by his own hand. William Clark married twice and had seven children. In 1838, he died in the St. Louis home of his eldest son, Meriwether Lewis Clark, named after his trusted colleague. Meriwether Lewis and William Clark were American pioneers. They opened the West to the new nation. The Lewis and Clark expedition opened up the West. These two men helped pave the way for thousands and thousands of people who were to travel on the Oregon Trail many, many years later. And now to complete our notes on a picture book of Lewis and Clark, we should have from last week our main idea, Meriwether Lewis, and you should have added some main points on the right side. We have William Clark as our second main idea, and some additional notes on William Clark on the right side. And our last main idea after we have completed the book read aloud today is the expedition. So on the right side, you're going to write notes on things that you learned about the expedition. What are some things that stood out to you? Write them down. You can write them down in your notebook paper, in your notebook, or if you typed your notes last week, add on to your notes and submit into Google Classroom. What are three things that stood out to you from this read aloud?